Hi guys, Katima Gaming here, and today we will be reviewing the Seraphim A1 gaming headset, which claims to be the world's first gaming headset with EQ customization, bass boost, and 3D surround sound for all platforms. Do these headphones really walk the talk, or is this just another marketing fluff by Seraphim? Let's find out. First of all, a big thank you to Seraphim for sending me these headphones for free. This is the second product I actually got for free from Seraphim. If you keep up with the channel, nearly a year ago, Seraphim also sent me their premium racing wheel to review. And just because I got it for free, I was not afraid to criticize it for its shortcomings. So first I thought, yeah, I was really too harsh on their racing wheel. They're not going to send me anything this time. It's over. Then a month ago, Seraphim had the balls to send me their premium headset worth about $100, knowing that I'm still going to be hard on it. So thank you, Seraphim, for having the confidence and trusting me to review your products. These guys definitely believe in their stuff, all right. Guys, I am getting stuff for free. This is like the dream, of course. I'm just a small channel. It goes without saying, though, that this wouldn't be possible without you guys. Yes, you. I'm talking to you, the viewer, the subscriber. Guys, those who supported me and my channel, thank you so much for making this happen. You made this happen, guys, and I promise I will keep doing my best. All right, enough housekeeping. Let's talk about these headsets. Now, this is a very difficult review to make, actually, because the Seraphim A1, I mean, like, it's got its work cut out for it, guys, because at the $100 range, what does it do in order to stand out in a very saturated and very confusing landscape of gaming headgears? There's just so many of them out there, guys. If you Google best headphones under $100, boom, it's just so many. So what makes these special? Let's talk about it. Let's first unbox this bad boy. The box itself feels high quality, mostly with a black serious design. Upon unboxing, you have a manual with multiple languages, a big sticker, which would put a razor to shame, the headphone itself, and the detachable microphone on the side. The audio box is in the center, more on that in a bit, and the wires are behind the box along with its accessories. The box itself makes it a point to let you know three things off the bat. EQ customization, bass boost, and 3D surround sound. The EQ customization is interesting because you can make those adjustments on your phone via Bluetooth. Again, more on that later in the video. So, on to the headphones itself. I've had this for about a month now. And the first time I actually picked it up, ooh, it's very light. Just under 300 grams, actually. And normally, we associate light headphones with being cheap. But, ooh, oh no, even though these are very lightweight, the moment you put these on, guys, the sound quality is pretty good for its price range. Also take note that the headphone being light means it's actually very comfortable to wear. Uh, and unlike most headphones, I can keep this on for hours. The headband is made of one metal piece carved out from side to side, and it's got a lot of flexibility to it, all covered in stylized stitch rubber and leatherette. The head cups themselves are actually made of plastic, which gives them the very lightweight, but they are also rubber coated, which makes them feel very grippy and have that premium feel. Cushion on the cups actually feel great as well, and like I said, I can wear these for hours, guys, without headset fatigue kicking in, and the sound it makes when you make that adjustment on the headphones. Oh, that feels so good. What's even more impressive for this price point is that the cables are braided all the way from the headphones to the audio box, guys. Even their audio mic splitter. I mean, like, look at that. It's braided. I've never owned headsets with braided cables. I dare you to try to find any brand that actually comes with a splitter that has braided cables. This really makes it feel like it's durable and gives it that premium feel. And what I really love about this, guys, is that the microphone already comes with its own pop filter right out of the box. Normally, I'd have to buy pop filters separately for my headsets and microphones, but this one just comes with it, no problem. All right, the audio box, also known as the control panel, is what makes this headset special. It's a lightweight plastic box with rubber coating. The moment you plug this in through the splitter on one end and the A1 on the other, you now have access to 
all of the features the A1 has to offer. It acts sort of like a DAC and amp, actually. As advertised, you have the bass boost, the 3D surround sound, and the LED controls, along with its micro USB charger. On the other side, you have the volume control and the mic mute switch. The top side also has an on and off button with some fancy LED lighting. So all you have to do is hold the button to turn it off and hold the button to turn it back on. This is actually battery powered with a 550 milliamp battery, which is rechargeable via the micro USB. What's really cool is that the audio box also has its own Bluetooth functionality to control the EQ settings for your audio. All you have to do is download the Seraphim audio app on your phone, connect your phone with the audio box via Bluetooth, and boom, you now have a complete control over your audio without going into the PC settings. There are 10 default EQ profiles that you can choose from, from video game tuned audio to rock to even classical. Take note that the audio box is battery powered with 550 milliamps, which can get you about two to three days of constant use. You can also just plug in the audio box in and use it while it's charging via micro USB. Now, you might want to ask, Oh, Katima Gaming, why can't I just adjust the EQ via my PC? Why do I have to go through all these fancy Bluetooth and smartphone functionalities just to make adjustments? Well, <laughs> you see, that is the major selling point of this headset, guys. You can adjust the EQ even when you're plugged into your console or on your mobile. Remember, the Seraphim A1 claims to be the first in the world that can do all of this as a multi-platform headset, okay? From PC to PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X or S, okay? Even the Nintendo Switch and mobile, no problem. So with the Bluetooth functionality, you can do EQ adjustments while on your console. That's, that's pretty unique, I gotta say. Here's an interesting bonus, guys. This audio box doesn't have to be connected to your headset. You can actually connect this to any sound system with a 3.5 millimeter jack, and you can control the volume and EQ adjustments on your sound system via Bluetooth. It's a really awesome addition. So the most important part, how do these sound? For a hundred dollars, I'm telling you guys, even without the audio box, those 50 millimeter drivers sound great. Music and movies sound clear with ample bass and video games are a joy to play with this headset. You can go from playing Valorant on PC to God of War on PlayStation to Forza Motorsports on Xbox and Mario Odyssey on Switch. Any platform you play, even PUBG on mobile, I'm telling you, whatever platform, this headset sounds great on all of them. The EQ adjustments really is an added bonus for the audiophiles because they can surely make those adjustments to meet their taste. The bass boost does give your headset an extra thump if you want it, and that 3D surround sound does its job. It's digital 3D surround sound, but it still helps catch those extra footsteps if you're playing competitively. What was that? Oh, that sounded really close. <laughs> that sounded really close. The microphone actually sounds pretty good. Let's switch to it so that you can hear how it records. There we go. And as you can see, the sound quality of this omnidirectional mic is way better than most mic headsets that I've used. Don't worry about the background sound. That's just my uh, electric fan running. It's pretty hot back here in Thailand. But man, with the pop filter in, this really helps improve the overall recording. The upper mids and trebles are a bit high for my liking, but overall, wow, for $100. This works in any podcast, game capture, or meeting. Uh, just don't sing in them. And I, I will always love you. I... Sorry, sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. All right, so it seems like I've been praising this pair of headsets for far too long now. It's time to give it some tough love. No headset is actually perfect, and there are some glaring design choices that I want to bring up. First of all, the headphones are only adjustable to the side, all right? Okay, they may be flexible, but you can't fold them. Okay, there is no adjustability on it, so transporting this thing can be cumbersome. Also, you can't really take this outdoors because even without the audio box, there's this really annoying USB cable that you have to take with you. You might think, oh, there's a USB cable on this headset, so the audio must be digital, right? Uh, not really. The USB cable is only used to actually power the lights on the headset. The real magic actually comes from the audio box. So if I could cut this annoying USB cord, that would be so nice, you know? I don't really need those fancy lights, and it also takes up the battery life from the audio box. 
Here's an interesting trick. If you want your lights, but you don't want to carry the audio box with you, you can actually hook up your headset to a power bank on that USB, and you can hook up the jack to your phone so you can listen to your tunes while walking around showing off those cool lights. Would it be too much to ask Seraphim to add a small battery pack inside the headphones? Eh. The audio box to me is great because you have control over your headset and sound system, but that bass boost though, oof, that bass boost is a little too much and it makes sounds uh, a little too muddled if you ask me. Now, this is just my personal opinion. I know everyone has their own preference, but that bass boost functionality to me is just too much. And when it comes to listening to music or movies, I barely use it and I would rather adjust my sounds via the EQ. The 3D digital surround sound is actually good. It does this trick where it brings up the mids and treble so that you can hear more of the background. But yeah, this works. But nothing fancy though on the 3D sounds. One of my biggest issue is the need to use this audio box. Man, during my first week, okay, I was excited to use this every day. But the more I use it, the more it became bothersome. You know, okay, ch check this out. So this is the splitter that you actually insert to your PC, all right? You're gonna have to connect your audio box on one end to the splitter, and then you connect this to the PC. All right, there you go. And then you have your headphones that you have to connect onto the other side via the jack and via the cable. If you want your lights, you can have the USB cable, and then I have to hook it up and you know, pair it with my phone again and get the right EQ going. Imagine doing this every single day you actually come in to play video games or listen to music. Ugh, that's a lot of process. So I got really tired of using this every day. And let's be honest, this sounds good even without the audio box. I mean, unless you're a real audiophile and you constantly need to change your settings every time, then have at it, of course. But if you're just a casual everyday player or everyday person using these cans, I'm telling you, it's pretty good even without the audio box. Lastly, and this might sound like a deal breaker for most people, but the microphone doesn't come with its own mic feedback, also known as microphone monitor. Uh, this function is where you can actually hear yourself through the headset when you're talking. A lot of serious content creators actually need this. It's actually important. I initially thought that you can control the microphone through the audio box, but as it turns out, this only does EQ settings for audio output, but not microphone input, so you can't control any settings you make for your microphone at all. Of course, if you have an audio interface that loops around, it's not a big deal for serious content creators, but for everyone looking for a way to actually adjust their microphones, you only got one setting unless you're on PC. So yeah, wow, I really went hard on these headsets, but this is just me nitpicking, okay? I'm telling you, overall for $100, wow, this headset offers way more than what most headsets can do in this price range, okay? You got your HyperCloud, SteelSeries, Logitech, Razer. Y'all look at all their $100 headsets. None of them is as feature pack and as flexible as the Seraphim A1. From PC to console to mobile, I'm telling you, this headset does them all and does them well, okay? My favorite part is the fact that you can wear them for hours and they feel so comfortable. Normally on any headphones, I start feeling discomfort in about two hours, I'm sweating, my head hurts, and it's really hot and all that stuff. But with the A1, I'm telling you, I went five hours straight in Warzone at one time and I didn't even wanna take them off. So overall, are these cans worth it for $100? Yes, absolutely. The sound quality, the microphone quality, the build quality, all of this already exceeds its value. Then Seraphim actually added an awesome audio box, which is actually useful in more ways than one. This is what makes the product stand out, okay? It's a very competitive market at that $100 range, so this one will actually give it its edge. If you like a flexible pair of headphones that does well on all platforms, guys, look no further. All you gotta do is get this all-in-one cans right here. If you're interested in buying this product, I'll have all the links of the product page from Seraphim down below.
So yeah, that's it. Once again, thank you so, so much, Seraphim, for sending me this amazing product. Big shout out to them for actually trusting me to review their headset. And of course, thank you, the viewers. Thank you, the subscribers. If it wasn't for you guys, this would not be possible. So this episode is actually dedicated to you guys. Again, nothing but gratefulness here. Don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this channel out. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. It also helps smaller channels like mine to grow as usual. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our past, present, and future videos. Sadiqa!